but it does go back to a little bit of inconsistency that is somewhat following through with this performance against Dewey today. Yeah, I'm very curious to see how he bounces back from the loss to Dewey. Um, and, you know, to go into recent, you know, obviously Vu has done well in the most recent tournament, so you got to kind of think that, yeah, he's probably feeling confident. He's been in a, probably playing a little more consistently in duel, I think, than, than Toxic, feeling like his, you know, overall game is, is you know, intact. I think Toxic probably, like you said, he's been very up and down uh, in these tournaments, and it's sometimes it's like he does something amazing, and his aim is just fantastic, and then other times it's like, what happened? Is he, is he a little off? It, it, didn't need his Wheaties, did not get enough <laughs> sleep. Um, I don't know, but uh, yeah, the consistency has been an issue for him, for sure. All right, guys, what do you think uh, we're gonna see in terms of maps? It's been a little bit all over the place today. I mean, we've seen uh, a lot of just like, crazy experiences on like Corrupt the Keep, on Ruins of Sarnath. A little bit less in terms of Blood Covenant, actually. I actually think on the subject of Blood Covenant, if there are two players that are likely to go with it, I reckon we'll see Blood Covenant from one of these guys. Um, because we've, I mean, whenever we see Toxic play really well, it tends to actually be on Blood Covenant in particular. Um, I actually think uh, at QuakeCon in particular, he had a match against Crazy, and Blood Covenant was the match that brought him back into the fight. It was when he really slowed things down to a snail's pace. I think it was really came down to Slash versus Sawlag was the main thing we saw. And it was just really pinpoint rails and a lot of slow play, defensive play that came through, but it was always that map we see him play on. And he likes Scalebearer. Some people sort of use Scalebearer now, and then he has actually even recently used Scalebearer on Blood Covenant before, which was a surprise to a lot of people because it's even pre-patched Scalebearer before he got the extra armor. So um, on top of maps, I'm also intrigued to see what champions, Toxic in particular, goes with. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think Slash is going to be an, an easy pick for him, especially if we see that Blood Covenant come out here. Uh, I think we're going to be seeing uh, their map choices here in just a moment. And uh, speaking to Blood Covenant, of course, both of these guys, you know, they have a lot of history with Quake. I mean, this this is a matchup that actually goes back way, way back. It's part of why everybody was so thrilled to see Vu take second at QuakeCon, because, uh, of course, you know, he's been not exactly out of the scene, but he hasn't really been, like, top performing in a while. Now, he's definitely back in the spotlight, and that means that the uh, pressure is going to be on. I believe that first map was going to be, what was it, Blood Run? I think it was? Yeah. So we're going to be seeing a bit of that play, another, you know, classic Quake map. You know, it's going to be one of those staples, just like uh, DM6 or Blood Covenant Dad, as it's now known. Uh, so this could be, like, uh, the most classic match we might see today here. Yeah, neither, neither man has an exper experience advantage on the map. Both have played Blood Run plenty uh, in their careers. So it's just about, as usual, you're here at LAN, you're here live. Who's going to perform better right now? It's not about what you did last week, last night. It's all about right now. All right, well, I'm going to put you on the spot, too, right now. Who do you think is going to take this one? Uh, because of the consistency issue, is, uh, pardon me, the consistency issues we were talking about with Toxic uh, and recent performance, I think Vu is going to take this one. I'll, in fact, I'll, I'll even say he takes it predict uh, convincingly 2-0. 2-0. All right, cool. Pretty uh, pretty strong bet there. Catch up. What do you think? I feel like whenever I watch Toxic play, it does seem like um, he does really well versus he he can hold his own versus any player. That's one thing we've seen. I mean, he had that like unforgettable series versus Cooler at QWC. And it's like, you know, at any point you can watch Toxic play against anyone, and there will be a, a point in your mind where you're saying, well, I think he's going to win. You know, you'll see a certain moment or a certain round and go, if he keeps playing like that, he's going to take it all. So, although I think, again, Vu being a little bit more consistent is likely to take it, I think it's probably going to be 2-1. Not a bad bet. Uh, myself, uh, I I'm going to actually like come down on this one. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the odd man out. I think uh, Toxic, because of his inconsistency, I think that Dewey game is going to be like a splash of cold water in his face. I think we might see another side of Toxic today. I'm, I don't know how long we're going to see it, but I think in this match, he knows exactly what the stakes are. So I'm thinking like 2-1 Toxic. Fair enough, indeed. I mean, it's, it's, it's really exciting that um, I don't feel like there's, there's any match in any of these groups where you look at and you go, that match, maybe you don't even see that one. Every match that you can pick today is ridiculous. And this is just another one of those like cream of the crop matches that I just can't <laughs> wait to see. You know, it's minutes away. It's the famous, you know, the famous line, the group of death. We were joking. Every group in this <laughs> tournament is the group of death. Like, there's no easy passes here. I mean, whoever you're playing is top notch. You're going to be up against it. They're going to put pressure on you. They're going to make some great plays. You're going to have to make some great plays to counter theirs. Um, it's all about who's sharp today, man. That's it. I I'm quickly running out of any ability to predict anything. Every match has been a nail biter, but I think we're going to go into it right here, right now. First map is going to be Blood Run Vu versus Toxic. Catch up and Machiavelli, take it away. So the first immediate thing that we're going to see is this champion lineup. I think Vu, you know, we know he's he's going to go anarchy. I mean, it, that's like, you know, guaranteed. I don't think we're ever going to see that not happen. Tox really is where things get more interesting. Now, Blood Run being the first match, um, I, I think... 
Yeah, I've seen. I've actually seen Tox run Scale Bearer a few times. That's on, really, I think, was going to be my 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 sort of like talking point was that if if someone's likely to change a champion or go back to a champion, it's probably going to be Tox because even like during the the the, the first days of like, you know QWC competitive Quake, Scale Bearer was really sort of being played tons by Toxic, and now Scale Bearer is being sort of brought into the fray a little bit more. He's got the extra twenty five armor, which has helped him massively. Yes, you know. you, you've obviously seen a difference in the pick rates once they gave him a little more stack. And his speed is decent as well, I keep pointing that out. In terms of just strafe jumping, his, his max speed's fairly decent. He's not a slow, heavy champion by any means. And then you add in the charge as, a, as another, you know, wrinkle into his game to lower damage and increase speed. He's a very useful champion as long as you have those avenues to really charge. And it looks like uh, sticking with Sorlag as well on Vu. I was wondering about that, if you'd stick with the Sorlag Anarchy thing. Uh, Doom Slayer's obviously been very popular. And of course, we saw there's the uh, scale bear pick up from Toxic. And now he's going in with Anarchy finally, which is what we expected. Ranger. Ranger. Toxic, whenever he streams and he goes on Blood Run, Ranger is quite a popular champion because he's pretty disgusting at hitting those telefrags. Yeah. I know sometimes he does it for like maybe like fun, but for the most part, it just comes down to like good execution and good knowledge. And, and also, he's great at changing elevations on a map like Blood Run. You can grab that mega health and get right up to the uh, heavy armor very quickly because of his teleport. He can throw guys off when they think you're lower and you teleport up to a different position and just change levels on people the way he can. And, it, and it's not exactly a long cooldown on that ability, not to mention the telefrag option, like you mentioned, is, and the is damage, always a danger. And before you even telefrag, you've got the dire orb too, which, yeah. which in itself does massive damage. And it's got a pretty, uh, pretty generous hitbox on it as well. So it's not the hardest, not the easiest thing to, to miss. It's certainly one of those things that when you're up against a ranger that you always have to kind of keep in the back of your mind is his dire orb up. Because if you get too aggressive, get right in his face, it's almost a guaranteed uh, telefrag at that point with these guys. As they call it, the cess gate. You're, you're just going to go down. Well, it's like it's like the, the, the thing that we, we, we can't ever forget when it comes to Ranger is just the comeback factor of the die roll. He ignores all stack. He doesn't care how much health you've got. He doesn't care how much armor you've got. If he hits one good telefrag, you are instantly gone. And the momentum shifts in the blink of an eye. Now, Toxic going scale bearer first. This doesn't surprise me, but at the flip side, I think the read might have come through for Vu predicting scale bearer. So he wants to go toe to toe with a of health and armor in retaliation. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who can knock who off their heavy champion first. Um, Sorlag, I still think, regardless of the changes, will be very good on this map. Come around the wrong corner and eat that spit. It's still going to do a ton of damage, even with the reduction. I think both of these champions are pretty well known for having an amazing start, particularly on Blood Run, uh, when that fight takes place. And Toxic going all in, I think. The mission wasn't ready to do damage. The mission was to just secure the rocket launcher for a later fight. Yeah, absolutely. You need this is that is a gun uh, for those unfamiliar with Quake. It is your bread and butter. It's the best all around weapon in the game. You must have a rocket launcher for the most part to uh, defend yourself properly in this game. And now the lightning gun has uh, received some changes. Rocket launcher becoming so much more prominent. And the players, I think many players actually being very happy with these changes. They liked rocket launcher being back in play a lot more. But speaking of LG, Toxic has one to pick one up. Eats a rail though for his trouble, but with uh, Scale Bear having that natural health and armor. Very easy for him to get healthy in the blink of an eye when he's about half health up. Vu playing very smart right now, just not doing anything too crazy. He's keeping a stack up. Both guys are fairly stacked here. It's very even. It's gonna, who's going to set the good trap here? He's coming in. Oh, great shots by Vu. Yeah, that's likely to be Vu's fight, and he'll take it 100%. I mean, Toxic tried to get out there with the charge for that damage reduction, but I mean, at 30 health left, I mean, you can only really tank so much. And he's caught a fantastic spawn. Toxic tries to go in for the Berserk, but even then, caught fresh off spawn. Rockets coming his way. Hard to survive that one, too. Yeah, absolutely. And now Sorlag's running around. She's stacked. He's going to have both these major items on timer and decent separation so he can run them effectively. Uh, Toxic's going to have to... He's going to have to whittle him down, maybe set some kind of major trap, any, anything to get that stack off. Oh, he's going to be in trouble here. No, I, mean, I can actually, even though he's going to die for this ticking damage, I completely respect the attempt right there. I mean, like the second there was a couple of things, Vu saw the rail miss and was like, during the downtime, I'm going to go in, I'm going to be aggressive. With the knowledge of that, I think Toxic expected him to go in. That's why he went in for the telefrag, just yes. in case he came through. He would have been back in the fight, would have got an insta-frag. Unfortunately, just didn't work out. Yeah, I mean, you, you totally understand what he was going for there. I think you called that absolutely correct. Um, he had a great opportunity, too. The sore lag was right in his face. He just, he just missed it. But the uh, start has been somewhat similar to what we saw last time. A little bit more damage has come onto the table, though. But I said it right, the, uh, the mission of getting that chunky champion out of play first, but... Great shot. That's all I think Toxic will be quite happy to just take that trade off to at least make sure the heavy armor doesn't go to Vu. It's a good shape now. I'm wondering if he pushes. No, he didn't push down for that mega health. 
Oh, five seconds gotta away, we're going to see. I don't know what's up. Oh, he's going for it. Oh, I love is. how he's using the charge to secure the items that he really feels are going to be a battle over. You saw it earlier in the round, uh, first round with the rocket launcher. He just left no doubt about it, even there with the mega health. He's like, you know what? I'm charging in. I'm not going to leave any chance to this. Yeah, if he takes no damage along the way, even if he does take damage, it's less. And then when he's hit the item, he's going to be healthier for the next fight that takes place. But again, the, the second Vu realizes that there's a healthy scale bearer on the map, he just slows things down to a snail's pace. Yeah, you can see they're both... Actually, it looks like Toxic Guy. He's got a little read on him, definitely after the rocket jump. Oh, minimal level. damage on the rocket, though. Actually, the, the execution comes through. Trying to actually sort of combo this down. Can here? he finish oh. the job? Oh, he gets away, but ever I, so slightly. Wow. <laughs> Who is, oh, the, oh, my goodness. That rail was done as well. I, I, I love the execution there from Toxic to like go in for the combo. It goes in for the rocket, goes in for the charge, tries to finish it. But because that initial rocket only did eight damage, it allowed Vu to just run away with a speck of health remaining. It was still a great play, though, by Toxic. So even even though Vu got away right now, um, it's still dangerous for Toxic. Obviously, he can rebuild his stack. Oh, great rail there to keep him keep him low. But, you know, Toxic's in good control now because of that encounter. I mean, he, he can really run the map right now. Yeah, just because you don't get a frag, that doesn't necessarily mean the advantage doesn't go in your favor, for sure. And even now, he's trying to control Mega. Takes all oh, quite a chunky rocket, though, so he loses a huge chunk of his armor. Now, Vu, like, you're right, Vu clearly is slowing it down right now, listening, trying to catch him. I think he's trying to set up a nice acid spit rocket combo. There it is. I think Vu might have been a little bit preemptive. He clearly heard him coming, yeah. but a little bit preemptive with the uh, acid spit there. I think Toxic was probably ready for that one. Oh, wow, nice. all in. This is a completely different change of momentum, and he catches wow. him with a nice rocket just like that. Vu just flips it, flips that switch. Definitely caught Toxic a little off guard there. Oh, my goodness, though, he stole that. Oh. And uh, that happened last time where he, he caught him early on the spawn. I think right there, though, Tox probably thought, I'll try and secure Mega with a little bit of increased speed. Tries to go for the Telefrag, and for another time, doesn't work. Can he finish it, though? One health One. left. Vu is alive, but barely. I don't know. <laughs> just how did he get out of that? Even just pushing, I was thinking, man, you're very brave. <laughs> I think Toxic, he's just like, he's in both of those situations, he's just realized that if I get this Telefrag now, back in the fight, but... Even though it didn't work there, he did a huge chunk of damage, and really, Vu, very fortunate to get away with one HP. The problem is, look how quickly he got his stack back up. <laughs> That's kind of what I, you know, I always allude to that. If you don't kill a guy like this, it's always dangerous. Look how quickly now he's back, you know, with a regular full stack. It's a perfect example, really, from one health to max yeah. <laughs> in, and, like, and, 10 seconds. Yeah, exactly. And, and so if you can't capitalize on the advantage you have, uh, it, it's, it becomes difficult because you're giving these players so many chances to come back on you, right? And they're all talented. So getting that frag opportunity and taking advantage of, advantage of it is very critical. Tries to sort of like thread the needle with that die roll, but clips the wall ever so slightly. Not going to be down for a huge amount of time. That's the thing about range. You can be a little bit willy-nilly with those die rolls because of that 20 second cooldown. I mean, you'll get that back easily. Yeah, absolutely. Pick up a few hourglasses and, and you're good. But uh, Vu's going to slow it down for sure right now. He's got a nice two frag lead. Oh, he got caught. Oh, Ooh. good mid-air rocket. Just snapped up and wow. I mean, he wasn't even looking down there when it connected. He was all dedicated so heavily into that die roll again, but that's two times in a row. Vu has sort of like smelled blood, played so carefully at the very beginning, but then the second that uh, initial dangerous champion is out of play, just dedicates massively. But I think both times we've seen the Doom Slayer hasn't done a huge amount. Toxic has piled so much into to one item and he uses the Berserk to try and secure it. It's never worked, and he's pretty much been playing this with two champions because the Doom Slayer hasn't done anything. Yeah, was, he stole the Mega Health, but you got to give credit to Vu. His rockets right now seem really on. He's placing them well. Like, he threw them in the air. He landed, he landed another one when he landed. So even though he grabbed the Mega Health, he was throwing them around and hitting, hitting him with such good damage. So he just took him down quickly. He didn't, get, didn't give him a chance to punch him. Uh, Toxic has got one rail, needs plenty more of those. He's so known for having fantastic rails, but against someone like Sawlag. The rails really only serve that purpose to keep her at arm's reach. And then when the oh, fight happens, but... Miscue there. He meant the rocket jump and the uh, mistimed the fire rate. Not a huge amount of damage done for the uh, heavy armor, so he's happy with that one. Yeah, definitely. He's uh, going to push hard for this mega health. I feel like Toxic is uh, a little bit more confident that if, if he's going to deal with this Sawlag, it's going to come from Ranger. He's gone for Ranger first this time. I think it's not only just uh, the damage of the die roll, but it's also, I think, just the, the mobility he wants access to. Yeah, he's definitely, well, you know, the last couple rounds, you know, haven't worked great for him. So, you know, got to change something up, right? And, for sure. Yeah. 
they actually almost like because the fact that you can sort of see the champion you're up against it kind of almost gives that that information to the opponent that you're not confident in what you've been previously going with and the attempt to twitch things up it can show that you're a little bit worried about a certain thing and right now clearly the issue is saw lag is quite a big problem here looks like a little miscue here by Vu. he should have been all over that mega health considering he got it last time he's still setting a trap but now toxic will have uh, both major items for, for a short period here Somewhat had Toxic uh, in that little room, but Vu doesn't want to push forward. And his accuracy, it, it, it just straight up, his rockets and rails have just been more accurate than Toxic's. So in these exchanges, Vu's the one doing all the damage. He's the one that's forcing Toxic to retreat just like now. I know he's undid all that heavy. Vu can now just continue to play the game he's been playing. Yep, he's, uh, he's playing smart. And, um... Oh, oh, oh no! Dedicates into that dire orb, tries to escape, but just pulls the trigger too early and just falls back down into guaranteed death. Yeah, Vu's looking sharp. Look at Very impressive stuff. And the problem is when you catch a scale bearer fresh off spawn, if he spawns at the very beginning when you've both got starting weapons, it's not so bad. But if you just look at how many weapons Vu has, he has every single ounce of weapon he could want. He yeah, can... and that's oh, great charge. Might get away, might get oh. oh, and he manages to get that last minute rocket. Toxic tries, but... Whoa. Oh, man. Uh, okay, I mean, I'm just going to pop Berserk straight off spawn. If you're there, then I'm just going to punch your lights out. Oh, and then you hit him with the gauntlet. Oh, if he would have landed that follow-up rail, we would have had a very interesting round. That would have right. been one of the fastest turnarounds that we've seen all day. I mean, that rail definitely would have taken him out. Anarchy fresh off spawn, 75 health, cannot tank a rail. Oh, Toxic man. doesn't oh. get enough damage! 15 health left! Here we go, Toxic still in the fight. Oh man, that's that's definitely a couple shots Vu would like to have back. He had him at 15 health and just, just couldn't get that finishing shot. But hey, crops to Toxic, man. Cool as a cucumber in there. I think Toxic a little bit more inclined to be aggressive if he could take it. Doesn't really want to walk too much into a super nail though. But it does always come down to just knowing the opponent. Like when they've just respawned, what is their equipment? If they've spawned near something, are they likely to have it? Now, such an advantageous situation for Vu before, where Scalebearer had just spawned, and it's like, well, I've got every single weapon. If I catch you now, what are you going to do to stop me besides charge? Very interesting, though, because if Toxic can turn this round around, get himself back in this map. You know, we've seen we've seen two zero turnaround round turnarounds here uh, earlier. Razy had a nice turnaround against uh, Rafa earlier. Straight up three zero, and it kept him in the fight. Toxic with a really nice amount of control over the middle here, though. Yeah, he needs. He knows Vu's over there, so he, that's a typical tactic. You kind of drop rockets on both sides. Here we go, though. Fresh off the heavy. I think he's being a little bit brave. But Vu's already sort of dedicated. I wonder if he's aware he's around the corner. He's, he's pretty much completely content with him being in the middle here. Oh, there we go. He's heard him there for the turnaround. Yeah, Vu definitely heard him there. And that's a guaranteed mega, but Toxic, only one rail in the tank. Again, Vu doing a good job. He's out of control, really slowing it down. Uh, you know, I touch on this sometimes about controlling pace in a duel. You know, when you want to be able to control the pace, and if it's slow, it's because you're making it slow. Right, Toxic, though, did take one quite chunky rocket there because Vu just fresh off the heavy. That's the interesting thing about these sort of mirror situations is if, if one of you is controlling both items, that guy just has a straight-up advantage because you've got identical health and armor. Yep. Now, we are in sudden death. It doesn't make too much of a difference, though, because it is one champion left regardless. This could be a very slow round indeed. Neither player dedicating too hard. I think they're just looking for that one magical moment. Just hit one good rocket, one good rail, and well, then you might see. If you're Vu, I mean, I, I can't say exactly what I think, but if I was in Vu's position right now, I'm thinking I don't want to give Toxic a chance to get back into this map at all. So I'm going to play this really tight, really conservative, and make, make him make a mistake because I just don't want to give him any breathing room. I don't want him to get hope that he can somehow pull this map out. I want to go up 1-0 and get him to the next map. I mean, I feel like you'd be right there. I mean, if this round goes in the favor of Vu, he's up one, he's up one map just yeah. like that, and... It's his round to lose yeah, he, when he's got this lead. He can be very patient right now, and, and, you know, Toxic being down two rounds, that might add a little apprehension to where he feels he has to push. Oh, here we go, though. Massive damage on that rocket. 
But even then, Vu still doesn't want to dedicate because he still doesn't want to give Toxic even a remote opening. Yeah, like I mentioned, I anticipate to see a little conservative play right now um, as they know one death and that's it, especially from Toxic. He's not going to give up anything easy. This just becomes a game of chicken, right, where he, he's challenging Toxic. Like, how patient are you willing to be? Right now, though, Toxic, I think, quite happy to follow suit for now, but only in one and a half minutes into this sudden death, plenty of time for something to happen. But while Vu is playing that slow down game, he maintains the control of the middle of the map. So because he's got that heavy, he can slow things down. But this is just going to further frustrate Toxic, that Toxic is having a harder time getting that armor. And now he just gave up that mega health. Uh, hmm, it's going to be interesting here. He still has some of his mega health left because Toxic hasn't taken any damage. So he's a little overstacked on the health, but uh, it's clearly Vu has a better stack right now. Oh, there we go, that rocket will help. Still a little bit of an advantage, but that's only going to last so long while they continue to play this slow game and the overcharged health just ticks down naturally. Here we go, here's the armor. I don't think Toxic really wants him to take it, but if he misses one of those rails, it's going to allow him. But no, double jumps over the heavy. That's a... Uh... Oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh, but I feel like, is Toxic going to capitalize? Does he want to risk capitalizing on this? Oh, he's got Doomslayer, so yeah, very smooth. I like the very good, very good. I like the approach. To, yeah, he took the an 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 excuse me, an angle that Vu had no shot on him, and then he had the high ground just like Vu. Backed yep. off with some defensive rockets, took the armor. Great and, play. And I think worst case scenario, if he took a rail but got a good rocket there, they would have essentially traded the damage. Yeah. He was in, and Vu was in that short little hallway there, so it's, e it's easy to line up some damage in there. So I thought uh, it was a great approach by Toxic. It's important that he's showing this level of, like, not necessarily composure, but just he's playing as well as we know Toxic can play, even when he's this far down. And Vu is, once again, clearly slowing things down to challenge Toxic into making a mistake. Toxic just isn't biting. But he's a very level-headed player anyway, you know, so I'm not surprised to see this level of composure from Toxic. Of course, these guys are very experienced. And, you know, nerves affect everybody to some degree, but when you're used to the stage, uh, it makes it a lot easier. Toxic hitting a lot more rails than Vu right now, though, and that's only ever going to help him out. Yeah, Quite a substantial difference. This, yes. like he's going to get aggressive. He knows he has him low. Oh. Yeah, I was on shot just <laughs> a half a second too late. But that's a completely free heavy. Yep. Oh, Vu knows he can't challenge. I, I, I'd be surprised if Vu even challenges for this. He'll probably look to put a little damage on Oh, nice. Caught him off guard. What a mid-air rocket. Oh, but Vu landed some. Wow. Those retaliation rockets, I mean, especially in this version of the game, so important. Yep. If you get caught off guard, as long as you hit one, a little bit of a fumble there, wasting maybe a second or two, but... but this is going to be uh, something they're going to face. I mean, Doom Slayer has got a, a very respectable amount of health and armor, and if they're both maintaining a maximum stack, this is what we're going to see. Hang Great on, Toxic rocket. Court, one more rocket, and he might go down. 29 HP is not much at all. Vu, significantly healthier. Went for a couple mid-air rockets there, just didn't work out for him. And it was lined up. Honestly, the second uh, second shot, that mid-air rocket was there for him. He just, just couldn't connect. I actually am surprised Vu didn't chase that one because the, the difference in health was significant in that exchange. It hasn't been previously, and it's normally been a little bit understandable, but right there, Vu, still content playing this slow game. But now he has, like Great. you said, right, even though he didn't frag Toxic, it allowed Vu to just get both of those items. That was a good rail, though, by Toxic, so at least he took the majority of that armor off. Uh, we're still in this very much tight cat and mouse type of game right now. Neither guy wants to make a mistake. This could honestly be a 20-minute round. If this just continues this way and both players are content playing the way they are, it's going to be who breaks first. You know, and uh, as I mentioned, you know, Vu is in a good position here because the, the apprehension is going to be on Toxic because he knows he needs this round no matter what. Um, oh, I think that missed rail was actually going to allow Toxic to get the opening, but he's not going to chase it. I'm very surprised, wow, a little surprised, but it, I understand, you know, given the, the circumstances that, yeah, you, you got to be a little wary of pushing and especially pushing on somebody like Vu, who's, who's, who has great rocket placement. All straight off the Mega. Unfortunately, Toxic's in a bad spot. He's got to try and escape health. it with five health. Oh my Vu goodness. still doesn't chase? I have, I'm a little... little he had five health, my brother. I, I think uh, maybe a little miscalculation. You never know. Potentially. Yeah. I mean, as we mentioned, pressure's on. It's easy to make... <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> However, even though he didn't get it, he is still massively ahead because of it. Yeah, but still, it's now Toxic's going to at least get back his base stack pretty soon. So it's like the advantage he just had is, oh, man. Springs the trap, but only a little bit of damage from one individual rocket. Toxic on that max health, but Vu's been so consistently charged over. Even when they have these exchanges, Vu just 
has more resources available. Toxic's not in bad shape now. He's back to his normal stack. It's a six minute sudden death we're looking at right now. And this very easily could extend, but I may have spoke too soon. Oh, the rail Ooh. fails to connect, so Toxic alive again. Would have been very weak indeed. Vu doing a good job, you know, keeping him off the major items. Even though Toxic is not giving him much to work with, um, he's playing smart himself and trying to limit the openings, although he was very fortunate to get away with 5 health. Um, but Vu is also doing a great job of keeping him off these major items. And I just feel like he's just waiting for that one mistake. I actually quite like this aggressive approach from Vu. We understood that if I'm controlling the middle and Toxic's there, he kind of has to be in this portion of the map to get some of his stack back. Yep. So he just really sort of actually tried to bully that and get a little bit more damage where he knew Toxic was likely to be. However, pretty far separated now. Even when there's heavy spawns, I don't think Vu's going to be nearby to capitalize on it. Maybe half a second too late. Caught him on the point with the LG though, but hasn't got a huge amount of damage. Look at this. <sighs> Definitely a little miscue there by Vu. Certainly was late to that item, and Toxic took full advantage. And because they both missed their rails and minimal rockets too, Toxic is still super healthy. I mean, these rails, I mean, the longer this round is going on, these rails are starting to miss more and more, and it's kind of allowing the reset to happen again. Nice, and now Toxic's starting to heat up with his rail. Um, Railgun's one of those funny little weapons where it can leave Ooh. you in a hurry, and now all of a sudden your opponent's just nailing you with every single shot. I think we might be likely to see Toxic be aggressive on this one. I mean, he got two of those rails, he got the heavy armor. This might be the moment we see something happen. Springs the trap, oh, Vu! Just, mm. And that magic moment was not looking at the right place, but Toxic didn't pull the trigger. I and think he saw him in this, I think Vu saw him in his peripheral right when he, at the last, that's why Toxic decided to back out because he saw Vu snapping around to engage. Oh, they would have, yeah. There we go, that retreating rocket. Eight minutes into this sudden death. I mean, you so rarely see a sudden death go on for this long, but with two players of the caliber of Boo and the caliber of Toxic, it's going to happen. Nice. There's one, and ooh, the rocket doesn't connect, which again might allow Toxic to chase this one down. Catches tight, but he's got no rails. This might be a bit of a game changer. It's not going to allow him to now. chase. He's coming back. I wonder if he recognized. Oh, but he recognized he's definitely going to grab it. Oh, he's not grabbing ammo yet. Yeah, it must be the Mega's temporary mob. Still doesn't go in for the rails, actually. That's two cases, actually. He went in for the rail and tried to pull the trigger and automatically changed weapon. Needs a little bit of ammunition. Because the problem is the rail has been a, a huge element of Toxic being able to take the fight, but he's confident without it. He's going in for the kill, but he's taken so many rockets. But finally, at the last minute, Toxic gets the last laugh and what into almost a nine minute overtime. Toxic does steal the deal in the end. Was able to finally get that, that finishing shot. You know, we saw it on both sides, actually. Both guys have gotten away with critical health on several occasions. And he was just finally able to get that final shot to, to get it done. And, you know, Vu was one good rocket away from killing him. So, very intense fight. And uh, just like that, Toxic's gone back to the scale bearer first. Potentially see if he can get something working. Didn't quite work out in the previous two rounds, but this time, perhaps. But it's a nice opportunity for things to almost sort of like reset back to normal with the amount of champions that sort of bring their difference to the table. But very interesting how their styles have just gone completely to a more passive. Um, they're listening a lot. They're really trying to get a beat on them. Um, it, it shows the amount of respect because neither guy really wants to j jump into a bad situation. So they're they want the advantage. They want to know where their opponent is and. They're making it difficult on each other. And I think I'd want to say that a round like that, like, you know, like a ba basically a nine minute overtime round, there are a lot of players that would be quite fatigued after a round that goes that way. But Correct. I can't really say that I feel like Vu or Toxic would feel too much strain after that because of how much experience they have playing in this kind of setting. It can get to you though. It's, it's a lot, that's a long game. And then you're under pressure for that amount of time. It just wears you down. Yeah, you could get a little fatigued, but you know, these guys are pros, as you mentioned. They, they practice quite a bit, so they're ready for that kind of thing. You got to fight through it. Toxic rockets have been on point, but unfortunately, so have Vu's forced to retreat. But we're going to see it such a consistently slow pace. Let's miss one of those rockets, but no, Ooh. the charge runs out at the last minute. Toxic's now in big trouble. I don't think he's going to survive that one. Yeah, caught in the air. Caught in the air with a rocket into LG. If you scale bearer with that chunky old hitbox, I mean, not much you can do there. Yeah, again. Vu, some landed some excellent rockets. You know, it was a good charge, initial charge, but Toxic, he got the hit, but he just, after that, it was all Vu. He's 
trying to push this one in. I actually love the dedication, convinced that he could take every ounce of that so long as he got to Mega at the last minute. And because he did it, that brave moment to keep pushing has now allowed him to massively ahead of Toxic. Look at the difference. Got some health now, but he still has a nice amount of health over Ranger regardless, just by default. Yeah, Toxic's going to be very passive right now. He's in a world of hurt, especially with a fully stacked Sorlag running around. It's uh, probably be looking for that Dire Orb setup, I think, again. And it's uh, pretty much three for three rounds. Toxic's try to go to it. And I think some, some important data is going to be that Vu clearly does not mind playing a slow game. So if he's able to let an overtime go to nine minutes, he will play a five minute round. I mean, like the half of this round is already done and now he's got a champion limit. You know Vu is likely to play on that champion limit after how he displayed last round. It's, I, it's a very valid strategy, especially if you change it up suddenly for whatever reason, you're playing passively, and then he goes super aggressive. It can throw your opponent off. Um, and it's just important to be smart in these type of events. Don't overextend. Uh, recognize who you're playing. You know, it's toxic. It's to oh, wow. That's going to... Oh, and he gets goodness. another one. I wow. mean, like, I'm pretty sure even without that frag, Boo was just content keeping Toxic behind, let alone get a frag in that exchange. Yeah. Oh, no, off the spawn, Toxic. He's awesome. in a lot of danger. He's a lot of danger. I'm a little surprised Boo didn't go for that, but he, that again just shows you the respect he has for Toxic as a player. Even though he had 100 health, that's just 100 health, it can go very quickly against somebody like Toxic. Also, it might have been that he didn't trust his ability to maybe chase it down. I know Berserk, yeah. considering Vu wasn't really riding any kind of movement momentum, Berserk putting you instantly in that 550 speed, I don't know if he thought he could chase it reliably. Yeah, and, and coming down the, those stairwells down the jump pad, you're in a you're not in a great position. So that's, that's more of a, I know I can get the finish, because you're going to take damage on the way down. However, regardless of how Toxic has been able to get his sack back up, we can't ignore this clock. We're almost one minute left of this round, and Vu has been playing so patiently. I mean, one minute for two frags. He'll happily take that advantage all day, every day, especially in this kind of, like, this level of play. Yeah, Toxic needs to make a move. Realistically, he needs a frag fast, like, now. He needed a frag 20 seconds ago. That, that's how I feel about it right now. Um, already, if he was only down one with a minute to go, that'd be tough enough. But being oh, down Toxic two, again has no rail. He's had to give himself a little bit more ammo. I mean, he actually was like in line of that too, but he had no ammo to get the job done. He needs to go all in right now. He needs to go for broke and try to force, in a, force a frag and then go for the spawn frag. That's his only chance in this round. 40 seconds left. It's not his friend, is this clock. Especially when he's taking rails like that. If he actually tries to be aggressive and push in, if he's taking rails along the way, what are even his chances of winning in that fight? 30 seconds left on the clock to take down two champions. This is a tall order. Tries to go for Zerk. Maybe he'll try and get him along the way. Maybe try and reposition as fast as possible. I don't really know. He's not going to have a Berserk for the next fight, but I don't think he needs it. Not enough time. 15 seconds. This is reaching impossible territory. It, it is. <laughs> there we go. That's going to be game, I think. Catches one rocket, but with that stack that Sawlag has, Toxic can't get anything off that. Five seconds for two champions. This map is done. 100%. There we go. Vu has been able to, in a very slow fashion, has been able to take this map, but... We're far from over, are we, Machiavelli? Yeah, and I, I'm, again, impressed with Vu. The way he, you know, came out guns blazing a little bit in that first round, but then... That the was Yeah, Toxic came back, and um, he, you could see he made an adjustment. He's like, I'm going to start slow playing him, maybe force him into some mistakes, and uh, just very, very cerebral play. I'm impressed. And, and the consistency, again, kind of reared its ugly head for Toxic. There were times where it's like, man, those rails are keeping the pressure on, on Vu, and then there were other times where it's like, he had Vu low, and he just couldn't get that last shot. Yeah, we also, on the subject of, like, you know, the last shot, there were there was consistently times where Toxic had no shots because he had no rail ammo. Yeah, um, like, there was, it was definitely, like, in that last round, it wasn't the first time we saw Toxic line up a shot that would have connected, but instantly swapping weapon, in, like, you know, indicating that he has no ammunition in the rail, it was uh, quite tricky, but I actually find it that the, the play we did see from Toxic in that overtime was where he actually opted not to go for the rail. He just piled into the fight with all the rockets, and he actually won in the end. You almost worried a little bit that he was opting to not get ammo for the weapon that kept him in the fight for so long, but it did work out for him, at least in that one ridiculously long round that we did see. I don't think he realized at first that he was out of ammo. I think he was just so caught up in, in playing the game, and, and, and again, that comes with the pressure of a tournament and, and playing somebody top like that. Um, you can lose track of something like that. And, and it, it showed when he clicked not once, but twice. 
And so that clearly shows that he didn't realize that he was out of ammo. And so I don't think it was deliberate. I just think you got to give credit to Vu, one, for, for mentally kind of making him question himself. What's going on? How do I, how do I get this win? He's slow playing me. I can't, I can't get an advantage. And you start thinking about all these other things, he forgot completely about his ammo. Now, Blood Covenant. I'm not surprised to see this pick come through because when Toxic is behind, this does tend to be the map that brings him back into the fight. And I think his slash is so well-renowned uh, in general, Toxic being like the Quake 4 god. It's uh, not a surprising champion to see that he has gelled so well. He really was one of the original slashes. Uh, and just riding that momentum through now. But these other picks are going to become very interesting. Visor, first time I've really seen this champion used. On this map, Visor is very dangerous. I was wondering if we would see Visor um, in this dual tournament, especially because they changed the fact that it is no longer a global announcement. So when he pops his vision, your opponent, the opponent can no longer hear that, that he has vision. That is a major factor. It's a changing thing. Because but, we did, it's... Yeah, before you would know he could see you, you could play off of that. You know, I'm not, okay, he can see me and you, you just know to wait it out. If you don't know he has vision, uh, that changes a lot because now you, you're just going to go blindly. It's like, oh, he's just lining you up through a wall. It's also, it's almost like, you know, I said it earlier, but it's the gift that keeps on giving is that piercing type because not only is it just good for uh, making sure that your next approach for an item might be a safe one, you know, am I going to be able to take this heavy? Is he nearby? If you can see the threat isn't there, it's way more easy if you take one of those items. Uncontested damage, you know, like there's so many corridors that someone can go through and if you know they're around a the corner and they don't know you're looking at it, that's a free rail. The benefit of Visor is that if you know someone's coming around a corner and they don't know you're there, you can charge that rail for the 10 extra damage, which is something that you, you so rarely see because you don't really have time to sit there in charge. Visor yeah. has got that increased luxury, but also taking someone out in a fight, popping piercing sight as they've spawned. If you've got a nice stack and a nice amount of weaponry, it's a, a good tool to rush someone with. Now that to me is, is a big factor in using Visor in a dual situation. If you can just play your opponent straight up, so to speak, and get that first frag with Visor without using your vision, all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, I just wait a few seconds for him to respawn, pop my vision, I know exactly where you are, and you can kind of try to be aggressive going for a quick 2-0 lead. So we'll see what happens. They're both going light, though. Ooh, Toxic actually oh, looking like he's going to be a little bit aggressive, but fumbles that jump, so he's not going to quite be able to go where he wants. And now the pressure's going to be on this heavy. Does manage to get away alive. No damage taken. So Vu, so Toxic. In a good form for now. Oh, wow. wow. Speaking of good form, how about a 20-second frag? to kickstart Blood Covenant. Yeah, that was a great initial rocket there. A little mis miscue by Vu. He fell down right into him. Oh my gosh. But Vu came right back. That was a, a good choice for Vu to just go straight forward. You know, hold that up arrow and just don't let go. Do not get caught by any of that rocket damage. He's alive temporarily. The Mega will easily see to that, but he had to be careful because that's why Toxic went in for the visor. I think Toxic knew he did so much damage. If he goes visor on spawn, pops his piercing sight, if Vu is likely to be weak, he could potentially have rushed that. So Vu's got to, he's got to get the stack back up. He's, he's in good shape though. I mean, Sor having Sorlag, again, is one of his stronger ca champions. We've seen it over and over again. So you got to be really careful. Even with the changes, Vu is very strong, great at the bunny hopping movement. That's one of his hallmarks of, of his style of play. So even though he's a big, that lizard, he gets around, like he moves around a mile, million miles an hour. Now. And that's what I love about Quake Champions is like the deceivingly fast movement of the big champions. Trying to go in for area denial, but toxic, toxic, toxic. She's gonna kill her. Yeah. yeah, really good calculation knowing that. I mean, I'm not standing in the acid. Now he's probably expecting me to come one way. It doesn't really matter. He's so weak, I can just pile in there and take it out. And he was completely on the money. Vu down to his Nyx. Seen very little of Vu's Nyx so far. Well, I think in the last map, I, Toxic didn't get much going, so he hasn't really had to go through his champions other than that uh, couple rounds, really. Yeah, I actually believe he didn't actually use Nyx in the uh, previous map either, right? It was, um... Oh, yeah, he didn't, I, did he even have Nyx? No, he didn't have Nyx. I think I have the worst memory in the world, Machiavelli. How about that? <laughs> but we don't really see a huge map, but I, I think it, even her is a very dangerous champion on this map, and Ooh. if you've got good movement, which Vu does, you know, some of the best movement in the business, not just in Quake, but in all of Arena FPS, she pretty much can go wherever she wants on this map. Toxic's in good shape, you know. Oh, oh my God. You were saying, right? <laughs> Just on the subject of being in good shape. You know, yeah, that may, he's in much better shape after that shot. Jeez. But I feel like his team composition has made sense, you know, the this, way he's approaching this. But just even that early start. That was a great, the way he timed uh, Vu coming around the corner on the top level like that and landed that rocket for 65 damage. Really threw Vu's movement off, caused him to fall down right in front of him. Excellent play by Toxic, looking very strong right now on Blood Covenant. 
Oh, he's a huge damage yeah. to Vermi. He's in massive trouble here. Oh, yeah, he's being gone. aggressive as possible. The, the injection's been popped, but the detonation on the plasma trail. Vu, the second he was airborne there, I mean, that was it. All he had to do was detonate, and even though anarchy has got that air movement, if he's stuck in that plasma trail on detonation, see you later. Very aggressive by Toxic. Love, loved it, though. I like how he just went right in. He knew he had an advantage. Oh, my goodness. He's getting hot. Oh, my oh goodness. how about one more? He just needs one more to finish this job. Uh, no, good finish there. Yep, don't, you're, you're hot, dude. Don't, you don't need to get cooled off by missing rails. So just finish him with the machine gun, get that frag, and keep keep the momentum going. Because I have a feeling he could see some uh, amazing Toxic stuff. There's four now, in a row. If toxic, keeps, if toxic keeps playing like Jeez. this, we might see this map go down faster than, than that one overtime round. He's certainly On heating He's heating up, man. That that was some some just disgusting play right there. He just mopped Vu up in that round. Uh, certainly Vu is going to got to be thinking, man, uh, this map's not going very well. Uh, maybe I should try to slow play, change something up. Definitely. Oh, my gosh. Um, I mean, just before we even have time to go back, that <laughs> exchange, he had to pummel out. He'd blown himself up. What a way to start this off. He's lost the anarchy in record time all three rounds. And I thought that has been a big problem for Vu as well, losing his star champion. And man, Toxic is starting to get in the groove here. His slash is excellent. You can just see the great movement. I mean, there are so many top-level slash players in this community, but Toxic still remains to be, in many ways, just a step above the rest of the competition. He's in danger here, though. That was a good play by Vu. Tries to finish the deal with the rail, but doesn't quite hit its mark. This is smart. But there you go, tries to nice. juke, but hit by another rail. These rails from Toxic have been disgustingly on the money. I don't want to jinx it, obviously, because he did just miss, as I said it, but both players very weak right now. I mean, he has a good good advantage point being in the high position. Oh, nice ghost walk. Jumpstreet just trying to put as much distance as he can, you know, not only get the mega, but try and get the armor before he goes up there. I think Slash can be deceivingly tanky as well. And the fact that she's got that natural 100 health. Even though she's got the speed and the hitbox of some of the smaller champions, she definitely doesn't suffer from the same low health count that the rest do. Yeah, and, and interesting right now is that both the major items are basically spawning at the same time. This is an opportunity if you really want to slow play, you can do that because you can kind of trade oh. items constantly. Man, he is just landing some shots. Consistently. I mean, unfortunately, he doesn't quite get his rocket jump, though, so that's going to slow him down. It's going to get the heavy regardless. You know, said, right, you can, as long as the players are content taking that trade back and forth. Yeah, well, it looks like Vu is a little late on this, so um, that's, we're going to see a major fight over this heavy armor coming up, I believe. Vu has not really been hitting a lot of these shots, and he's taking humongous damage. One more shot. No, yeah, no. Super shotgun doesn't quite do enough, so Vu alive for now, but horror time if Toxic gets one more good shot. Yeah, Vu will go to the opposite side of the map. He's going to assume Toxic's going to be here to pick up this heavy armor, which Toxic is going to do shortly. So um, it's one of those things you make a read. And um, you kids risky, though. Think one of the things you can do, like if you're in Toxic's position there, is, is push the other item. But the risk is you're leaving up the heavy armor. And um, it's just one of those things you got to make a judgment call on. Actually, you find it so, it's so, such a, a turn of events, really, how we, we would say on Blood Run where Vu's accuracy was just so much more solid. He's popped the Ghost Walk to survive, but Toxic was not quite able to get a read. Uh, in many ways, they went in the opposite direction, but it was what we saw on Blood Run where Toxic was consistently behind because he wasn't landing his shots, but Vu was. Uh, now on Blood Run, it's pretty much a complete reverse of what we saw previously where Toxic's in control nonstop. Vu is constantly having to take these different routes just to try and not walk into a rocket or two, but he's still in a horrendous position down here. He has to try and get out of there, but with Flash. Full speed, I mean, that was that. Toxic playing really good on this map. You can, to kind of go on your, what you're talking about in terms of accuracy, when you switch a map, you know, all the angles are different and, and he's obviously much more comfortable there. Um, or he's just heating up. Maybe that could be a factor too. Some players can be slow burners. Sometimes a map doesn't go in your favor and it can be a wake up call to go right. Now it's time to turn the switch and actually start playing as good as I know I can. And on Blood Covenant, that was pretty much a perfect example of what Toxic can actually do when he's able to play the way he wants to play. And that, I actually think you could have fit that entire map into that one long round we had on Blood Run. Yeah, fairly it, certain. It, was, it was an amazing uh, display by Toxic there, especially, you know, coming back from from a map down, you know, so it puts that extra pressure on you. You know, this is all, this is it. You can't lose. Um, and he came back strong. Like, he looks really strong to the point that Vu should be worried a little bit, I think, going in, into this third map because all the momentum right now is with Toxic.
Yeah, I, I think like you, you're going to get so much momentum as well. Ultimately, it goes as fast as that Blood Covenant map was. We saw some ridiculously fast rounds. The second one, sorry, the third one, even though it was a little bit more standard still, Toxic was just, it's just the way he was playing. It was a, a, level of, a level of aggressiveness that I hope that we can see going into future maps. On that subject, Vu now, when you are able to slow the game down so much, and then you win convincingly off a very slow style of play, and then you lose the next map, very quickly on a completely, you know, a different style of play entirely. Going into this next map, it's like, what kind of style do you adapt? You know, does Vu try and switch this up completely, or does he stick to his guns? And I'm just going to give a little credit to Toxic, though. I think Vu did try to slow blame a little bit on DM on uh, Blood Covenant, and I don't think Toxic was having any of it. And he, he was using his slash to get around. He, even that uh, time there uh, across the RL from Bridge, you see he had the Anarchy. It wasn't exactly close to him. I mean, he just said, the heck with it. I'm crouch sliding, I'm coming right at you. And, and I'm gonna I'm gonna beat you right now. And and I, you know what? I like the confidence. I think Toxic needs to stick with that and and just play his game and not not overthink things. There is there is a you can overthink this game and, and it'll make you too tentative. So I, I think he just kind of let it let it loose in that game and it, it worked out for him. Now Runes of Sarnath being this final map, it's uh, in many ways this is a Vu playground. This Runes of Sarnath because it complements so many of his champions. His movement is sublime. This is a fantastic map for players with good movement on that subject. Toxic, I mean, if he goes Slash first, again, like we saw on Blood Covenant, it will also be quite beneficial for him. Visor coming up as well. I mean, we did see great things from his Visor. I think it allowed him to essentially bully Vu quite substantially. So I would be surprised if we don't see that again. Now, Toxic, he's having to think about this final choice. Who's it going to be? Scale Bearer again. Hmm, going a little heavier here, with the, especially with Visor. That's the one thing that Visor can catch people off guard. He's got a decent stack. Oh, yeah. And, and he's almost, he's not quite a heavy, but he's not exactly a... He's like in between medium and heavy almost. He's got a little extra, and that little extra can can pay dividends in a, in a rocket fight. So uh, we'll see, we're going to see what happens here. I, and I especially like Visor on, on Sarnath because you can find the way to cut off your opponent, right, with the teleporter taking you up. And, and a lot of times players will play off each other. Oh, I'm grabbing the mega health, and I can hear you below, and I'm going to keep it on equal timers. Having the vision maybe allows you to challenge for one of those items first and then fall back and you can make a lot of different plays when you have that kind of information. I feel like that kind of information is great because it, it takes an already talented Quake player and it just gives them like the best utility they could possibly have, right, is I already know where you're probably going to be, but now I have complete eyes on you. That's like a free shot. Yeah, you know? yeah. Not only do you know where they're going to be, but now you can hit them for free. They don't know you've got... It's it just... Uh, multi utility abilities and, and you can make and you can make assessments off of you know you see them moving a certain direction you're like oh okay your stack is x amount items are coming up here you're gonna take this route I, basically i would say i would take this route if i was you and you kind of play off of that so here we go this could be the final map i mean it was such a slow slow paced map on blood run from vu but toxic staying alive staying composed and just flipping that switch and uh in a much faster fashion decide to take Blood Covenant, but I feel like we're going to have, we're, we're going to see a lot of fast-paced stuff, I think, coming out from both these players, even if it's not the actual action itself. I can guarantee that both these guys will just be flying around the map with these two champions. Oh, absolutely. Look at this. Look, Tox is staying aggressive. I like it. He's, he's clearly feeling much more confident, um, putting some good damage there on Vu. Toxic has a nice amount of weaponry. Sorry, Vu, I guess I should say, looking at him on camera. Nice. Nice. Uh oh. Oh. I thought Vu was going to jump right over that wall and go after him there. Wouldn't be surprising this far. And we do talk about like adaptations being made and just trying to change the way it was being approached. But Vu, he's, he's still content playing that sort of like very careful style. I think he's going anarchy first makes a lot of sense on this map because you know it's pretty insane how fast anarchy can maneuver on ruins. Yeah, Anarchy, I think this is definitely a great. Anarchy's pretty good on any map, in my view, but this is really nice. When you grab the Mega, and because of the air control, you can really jump down and get to that heavy armor very quickly and provide an angle that's hard for your opponent as you're, you know, sliding through the air and moving. A little slow play here. Both guys just trying to get a bead on where the opponent is. However, Toxic coming up the stairs, I don't think he was quite ready, and because oh, of it, my. Toxic straight up behind him had complete surprise. I feel like he just, he, he, he pretty much from the absolute bottom of the map, walked up the stairs from start to finish, and there was no way Vu was ready for that approach. Perfect execute by Toxic. Oh my, just, wow. He's feeling it right now, man. And it, that just illustrates what a good read that was. He, he, like you said, he snuck up silent the whole way and ended up on his back. Like that's, 
just a great read, and um, he's feeling it right now. He's definitely getting getting some confidence. And at no point did Vu turn around either. Like th no. there was no way. There he was had no, way no he was clue. Ready for that. No clue. He was dead before Toxic hit, hit the fire button the first time. It was over before it started. But I mean, he got a good uh, respawn as well, and it just. I think that's that, that's what I really enjoy about sort of the Quake Champion duels is, is just how fast the turnaround can be. You know, it, it could be two minutes of a very slow pace round indeed, but then one good moment, one good ambush, one good read, and then you frag one person, get catch someone on spawn, two frags already down. And that's now right. Toxic has complete advantage. That's right. That's why I, I really feel in Quake Champions is it is important to try to get those finishing uh, frags, try to get that kill, get them out of the round because anything can happen in these rounds, as we've seen. It, it can turn on a dime. That was a nice little angle from Vu, actually. Good shot on the rail, but Toxic still has a huge amount. He's going in with the uh, Plasma Trail, but he's taking a huge amount of damage. More likely to use that speed boost to just try and get out of there temporarily. With two minutes on the clock, Toxic, he's now the one that's in control. If he wants to slow things down, he's going to have more speed than Doom Slayer. There's, yeah. there's, there's basically no way Doom Slayer can keep up with Slash. Yeah, he's going to... Vu is going to have to cut him off. If Toxic decides to run here, he's, he clearly can't just chase him. So he's going to have to figure something out. Yeah, he's already trying to actually trying to sort of uh, predict where Toxic's going to head off. He's not going to chase him down, as you said. One good rocket. Nice play. Seeing Toxic, he's doing the smart thing right now. He's got a two frag lead, you know, minute 20 to go. Uh, make this guy come at you, you know, make him run in through, through a hail of rockets. When you find yourself in this situation, if even if you don't nail a frag, even if they've got like 10 HP and they get away from the fight, as long as Vu is consistently behind here, you know, Toxic is completely content. This whole sequence has basically taken one minute. One minute of this round is left to go. If Toxic constantly keeps Vu weak enough that he can't fight, then he's going to win the round anyway. He doesn't even need a frag in this scenario. Like, as long as yeah. he lands these rails, that's it. And even keeping him low is just delaying time off the to clock. Oh, great shot again. Toxic is just on fire right now. And what a turnaround. Looks like my prediction may be going south. I mean, it definitely <laughs> looks like Toxic has woken up. I, I, right, was, definitely. I was looking so good in that first map. I was looking like a genius, and now it's like, whoa. <laughs> well, Toxic has that effect, I think, you know, but it kind of goes back to how he, he has up and down performances. Like, obviously, not to take away from Vu, his performance on Blood Run was sublime, and the way he approached that was very, very well calculated. You know, there's, there's not many players that would play that patiently for nine minutes yeah. on an overtime. But on the flip side, Toxic, I mean, he's just playing out of his mind right now. And it looks like, I don't know who's going to be able to stop him in this round. I would say if Toxic wins this game off this, I can see him making it out of this group. Because I think he's just going to keep riding this. However, let's not look too far into the future. We still have this series to finish. Cannot count Vu out yet. This guy got grand finals at QuakeCon for a reason. Oh, that hurt. That hurt a lot. Actually, he got out of there. Oh, yeah, it hurt a decent amount, yeah. Any other champion, then maybe they would have yeah. been dead, but saw lag nice and chunky. I was expecting him to be a little bit lower than that, but yeah, he is decently stacked. Oh, there's that teleporter. Here we go again. The, the adaptation as well, which has been changed by Vu. He's gone in with saw lag first. We have seen if you can head someone off, you're going to deal with Slash. Quite a common way of dealing with her on this map is to just spring that trap. When she comes around the corner, acid spit, LG, or a rocket at close range, and she'll die pretty quickly. But I think Toxic's doing a good job of keeping range, not letting him close that distance, keeping it to a rail. See, look at it, another great rail. Um, Toxic, I'm surprised. At this point, I'm getting surprised when he misses one. Yeah. <laughs> Tries to go in for the acid spit, uh, yeah. but actually doesn't manage to connect a single puddle. Oh, However, great rocket there. Yeah. That's just wow. More of those, and he'll be in good form. But I, I thought Vu was toast right there. It just—it really shows this. Oh. oh, well. Before we can even finish our sentence, Toxic just coming running around the corner of that plasma trail, detonating it the second he catches sight of him. I was saying that the rocket launcher has such an amazing way of just denying any kind of kill. You know, if you've got good rockets, it can save your skin so many like different occasions. But yes, I mean defensive rocket play is the hallmark of great quake players. They will keep you. Oh my! Oh no! He tries to go in for the ground shot for extra damage, but I mean that hundred damage rocket. You land a ground shot, even if you are anarchy and you're off the ground, you're still probably going to kill yourself in that situation. And that's not the first time Vu's accidentally killed himself. Toxic's in great shape. Yep, going going in for the kill. Oh. Sure, that was just yep. That was a very slash way of dealing with Doomslayer right there. <laughs> yeah, it was, right? The Hang did the same thing against yeah, Ron. It seems actually it seems to be a very valid strategy because people who pop Doomslayer 
they, they, you see them, they'll come right at somebody. So backing off and, and reverse crouch sliding and dropping a trail, it seems to be a very valid strategy. And it's yep. also the fact that um, if, if Doomslayer is dedicated to that lunging punch, yep. I mean, he's stuck in that lunge. Correct. He can't move. Like, he's yep. stuck in that movement. He's going, so. in, he's going in that line, and that's it. So if you land, lay, lay a plasma trail down there, he's going to take a lot of damage and, and the explosion. Now, this has been a very impressive turnaround for Toxic. In fact, is on match point against our QuakeCon Grand Finalist, Vu. I mean, this would be a very impressive turnaround for Toxic. That first map was so dominantly against him. But Vu having a hard time on Ruins. Very hard time. And this will certainly make Bracket uh, A very uh, interesting, Group A, because, you know, Dewey beat Toxic. But now Toxic's going to lose to Vu. I think Scissor lost to Vu. I, it's just, it's going to be interesting. It's going to come down to to the wire, I think, in this group. I don't know who's going to make it out. I mean, it's like we're talking as if Toxic has already won. It's looking good so far, but I mean, Vu, he could pull off the miracle and make this three-round comeback. We have seen it time and time again. Tries to spring a trap, but Toxic one step ahead, ready for him to be right there. And in fact, Toxic doing way more damage to Vu in that situation. He's trying to spring the trap, but Vu is just a little bit slow on the mark. Consistently right here, he's not getting any damage for all these good reads. Loses the Mega as well. Toxic just needs to land one more solid yeah. shot, and Vu is going to lose this Anarchy for one more time. Who's gonna get this heavy? Oh, there oh. it is. Oh, man. Oh, I was no. wondering if he was gonna catch him dropping down. I was like, is he gonna go for that? And he did, and great. Wow. Now, the saving grace is right there. Vu spawned right next to Toxic, but Toxic was not going in that direction. I mean, he could have potentially got this saw lag done. He might already have a dead saw lag if he went left instead of right. But Toxic has no reason to overextend. He approached Sawlag so intelligently before. And I mean, Toxic having a you know, quite a, like a competitive rivalry with Razy with the exact same kind of Sawlag situation, he knows how to handle this champion at the stage. He's fought it enough times. Yeah, Boo's in big trouble right now. He's in this kind of cut oh. corner. Yep. There's really nowhere you can go right there. It's really tough. Great job by Toxic recognizing that his opponent was low, keeping him trapped in that area, and then landing a great rail for the finish. Oh, he dedicates in towards the Berserk mode. Unfortunately, he's going to be stuck in that Berserk mode for a substantial amount of time. He's taking so much damage, and he's only just been able oh. to get a weapon on board. Goes in for the pummel, and that's not going to work either. Toxic completely flips the momentum switch and moves 